Merci. Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to be able to give a speech about uh, IPv6-related things again. Um, it's always a pleasure for me because for us, it's like the heart is very much in there, like moving forward with IPv6. And for us, like one of the um, interesting and challenging uh, questions is like how to grow IPv6 only services. Like how do you move forward with infrastructure that's not dual stack anymore, but you really get rid of IPv4 and you think about like, well, how am I going to build this? How is it going to be supported by vendor? And how are actually people going to use what we are going to build? Um, some warning. There are some like strong opinions in this talk. If you don't like them, try not to listen to it. Um, you know, what can I say? You might, you might or might not agree with me, and that's okay. Uh, there's a lot of things in there that we have learned in our company over the last years uh, that might or might not have worked for you, that you yeah, disagree with, that's perfectly fine. So let's start with something there that is, there is no chicken or the egg problem IPv6. Maybe some of you know what I'm referring to. Uh, just a short question, do you know what I'm referring to, roughly? No? Okay, two or three already. So, a lot of people claim like, well, I'm a content provider. I cannot offer like my content on IPv6 because people don't have IPv6 connections. Well, so ISPs, you know, say like, well, we would like to offer IPv6, but our customers really don't want it because there's no content on IPv6. And so some people are saying like, well, there's this chicken or the egg problem, like nobody wants to make the first move. And what I'm saying is like, this is not the case anymore. This used to be the case, but we're like far behind, beyond that. What I say is today, there's really no reason, there's no claim, and any, I, I challenge everybody here in the audience, I, I claim you can have IPv6 anywhere. And I mean really virtually anywhere. You can have it on any mobile phone, on any computer, on any device that would otherwise speak IP. And as I said, you might disagree there with me. Uh, if you do so, uh, let's have a talk later. Um, so this problem of you don't have IPv6 connectivity is solved. So anybody who was thinking of like, should we or should we not offer stuff on IPv6, you definitely should because anybody can reach you. So just a quick review there. Uh, a lot of ISPs are actually offering native IPv6. Uh, obviously not everywhere in the world, that is uh, clear. Good thing is like the network equipment, if you look at it like some years ago, you always had some problem like I will configure this under IPv6 and then it's like, right, it doesn't fully work yet. Um, from my experience, like whatever you touch, it has enough IPv6 support to actually do the job. Even if you don't have na native IPv6, uh, from my point of view, of view, you can get IPv6 with any kind of tunnel. Um, proof of concept, what we did is we are actually providing uh, IPv6 VPNs, and we've tested it to various countries in the world. And we actually had a trial running with some people from uh, specifically China, where we expected to have some problems for filtering. But even there, like we didn't have any problems in terms of uh, IPv6 tunneling. Uh, so if you claim was like there is a state or a region where you cannot have, have IPv6, uh, I would like to like uh, show that uh, it's not the case anymore. So on the other hand, as I mentioned before, we always have these two things that play together. Like you have to have connectivity to uh, actually be able to look at IPv6 only content. But then again, you have to have content providers which offer IPv6. And also that line in short, this problem also, from my point of view is also solved. There's, uh, if you spend more than like two minutes searching for it, uh, you will find any or enough content providers that actually support IPv6. So this, coming back to this, the chicken or the egg problem doesn't exist anymore in IPv6. So if you were thinking about whether or not to implement it, uh, the answer is you don't have like any problem there, this one. So as I'm uh, the 
early morning speech. Um, this is a bit, of, you already hear it, but it's a bit motivational. And I, I saw some of you already smiling, like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe hmm, this stuff probably doesn't work, what he's talking about. Fair enough. What I'm claiming is, like, everybody, everybody in this room can somehow contribute to IPv6 growth today. And this can be by something like some of you, I, I guess, like, at least 50% are running some network equipment. So the next time you set up a, a new network area, you can just say, well, everything that I manage, like at least my management stuff, is IPv6 only. Or you can say, my next Wi-Fi that I will set up will be IPv6 only. Uh, question for that, who tried to run Wi-Fi with like regular clients, IPv6 only? Just checking. Who was successful with it? It's almost 100% of those who <laughs> raised their hands. So, proven again, like by a major number of votes here. Um, even that works. Uh, some years ago, uh, some people here uh, are probably related to developing stuff on Android or have done de Android development. Some years ago, when you would uh, start up your Android phone and IPv6 only network, you get this really nice uh, message from the pull down menu. You don't have an internet connection, even though you had, just because you didn't have IP before. So that's not the case anymore. So you can really move forward and you can contribute. And what I'm going to talk about is a bit like where to start. It's a bit like where do you start when you are starting with IPv6? You might have heard about it, you might have thought like, Hmm, yeah, am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? And the clear answer is yes. But the question is a bit how, and this is something that we hear over and over again. It's like, well, I would like to try IPv6, but there are so many options. And what I'm trying to give you today is a bit an introduction of like where you can easily start. Things that don't hurt you, things that are easy to do, things where you can get your hands a bit dirty. And for those who are like really deep into IPv6, I'm a bit sorry, it's really not, nothing like breaking through new. But there's things that are really easier nowadays. Um, today, you can get a, like an IPv6 network anywhere at home. Like you can just start playing with it. You can get a box, like uh, there, do I have it there? No. I mean, there, there are a couple of like, easy routers, like you can, like a Raspberry Pi, or uh, like a Swiss variant, the APU, where you can just like put a Linux on it, set up uh, your IPv6 tunnel, and you will have IPv6 at home. So this is a really easy step, and I encourage everyone like uh, to try this out, and even to go like one step further, not to only enable IPv6 at home, but to even create an IPv6-only network. and this is quite fun. Like, you, you configure your network, you go IPv6 only, and in the first phase, you probably don't have a translator. Like, usually when you go production, um, you will have some kind of NAT64 translation so that your IPv6 only host can actually reach the IPv4 internet. But if you like, begin to setting up this and you may, uh, get your hands dirty, you will see, like, okay, in the first phase, you have an IPv6 only only network where you don't even translate. You will see that the important stuff of the internet, besides Twitter and co, <laughs> do actually work nicely on IPv6. Um, yeah, so Twitter is actually one of those who are not reachable directly by IPv6, uh, depending on a variety of what you're into social media. Facebook actually works on IPv6. Reddit again doesn't, but yeah, who cares? So. Then there's the next thing, like, given that you already have, I mean, you, you already have your IPv6 only network at, ho at home. And there's also like one interesting misconception. Uh, let me ask, like, who thinks here that IPv6 is more, is, is more insecure than IPv4? Oh, come on, guys. No one? Okay. But you know that there's this misconception of IPv6 being public and everything is more insecure. So when you actually set up your home IPv6 services, you can actually play and say, like, there's a whole network that is public-public without no firewall. 
You can like put stuff in there, you can get it hacked, you can put your honeypot in there. The thing is, what I really want to give or to say is, today, when you're at home and you have like, even if you just surf via some kind of mobile hotspot, you can have IPv6 there, and you can even offer services at home. The important part, it's, it sounds probably just too easy, because it is actually easy, but the important part for me is, today you can go back to where the internet was something like 20 years ago. If you do have an internet connection, then instantly you are able to offer services. I mean, what was the internet built for is you offer services to other people. And the reason why we can't do that at the moment with IPv4 is because you're behind like uh, CGNAT or what a kind of like, <laughs> not that it is ever. With IPv6, you can go back there and say like, all right, I have my, let's say hotspot, I have my really shitty connection, but I still can offer something here. And you can say, here is my IPv6 only service. The thing is, there's nothing stopping you. That, that is the most important takeaway. There's nothing technically today that stops you from actually doing this. If you then want to be uh, able to be reachable by IPv4, uh, we have set up um, like the dead end of the IPv4 internet. Uh, this website, no IPv4 here.ungleich.ch, which is basically something that you can reference if you set up a service in DNS and you don't have an IPv4 address, well, you cannot make an entry for uh, IPv4. You can just point the IPv4 address to the same address of no IPv4 here, and people will get a warning message saying, sorry, this page is not available with IPv4 anymore. So you can also be reachable by IPv4 saying, like, sorry, only by IPv6. The other thing, and this is a bit the main reason also why, uh, why I'm talking about this is uh, what you can do to grow IPv6 is to communicate, and communicate that you are actually offering IPv6 only services. Well, it might just be like a tiny part of your network, or it might just be an experimental service or your <coughs> network status. What you do is it's important to, to tell people like, have a look, there is IPv6 only stuff that we offer. So with this, you automatically help other people to go more to IPv6. One thing that uh, like helped for us a bit is like how do you think and how do you talk about IPv4 is like a lot of people like when they start and I'm having a lot of discussions about this is when you start networking, many courses are still focused on IPv4. So you start, you do your net mask. Uh, in the worst case, you will learn about like class A, B, C, D networks, and obviously this is really, really outdated. And so in this regard, what I recommend is like whenever you talk about IPv4, make it a bit clear that IPv4 is actually legacy IP. It is still there, but it's something that you might not support anymore in the future. And from from thinking perspective, it also helps you a lot of building networks. So in terms of uh, legacy IP to go back there, there are some things, and we, are, we might be like pushing a bit in this direction, um, but if you happen to get stuff that doesn't work on IPv6 and is IPv4 only, just return it. This is what we do. We're talking to uh, quite a lot of vendors, and if we get a device that works on IPv4 only, we, we de decline it. It's like it's like a broken package. You don't want to have a device that only has half the functionality. Same goes with software. Um, there's like uh, it, there's still like some software, and it, it luckily it gets way less, less, less every year. That is IPv4 only. But if you have such a thing, try to like use a different software. Same, <laughs> if the internet provider only offers legacy IP, well, you can switch to a different provider, uh, you can use a tunnel, uh, but make them aware of it. Another thing, I coming back to this like communication, and as I said, like, I imagine like at least 50% here of you are uh, directly involved into building networks. If you build a network, 
really plan IPv6 first and then later think about do I actually need IPv4? Do I not need it? What do I need it for? And the reason, this is not only like uh, politically or um, let's say philosophically. If you start to think in IPv6 only networks, your life suddenly becomes much, much more easier. You're not thinking like, all right, I have here my, let's say, with legacy IP, you have your slash 16, and you're saying like, okay, I will have uh, maybe this office there, that office there, so I'll take a slash 24, that doesn't work anymore because we have more mobile clients now, so I need, least, need at least a slash 22 for the mobile client. And we're talking about private legacy IP space here, so you're doing a lot of work to plan your networking. And then in the end, you see like, all right, I have my network plan ready. And now somebody's talking about a new brand, new office, and like your whole network plan is screwed up again. Because even in your private space, you don't have enough space to properly plan. So, oops, sorry. Uh, so what, what, what I wanted to say with that is, um, if you go IPv6 first, you always just hand out your slash 64 for any network, for everything else, for his site, you have the slash 48. It's, it's a no-brainer. You never have to think about anything. And adding IPv4 on top, well, you can or you can't, like in the end. Coming to um, IPv6 only services, um, there are a lot of things where you actually can try this in a non-harmful uh, manner. So you can say, like, for instance, your internal network, and we do have a bigger vendor, this was in the press recently, uh, who is also moving towards uh, IPv6 internal. Uh, Hint has something to do with a bigger operating system. Um, it is something that is new, but it's something, again, that is very helpful. And you can start by saying, like, our uh, internet pages are all <coughs> IPv6 only. There's, there should be nothing that stops you from it today. Same as, like, you can say there, like, DN, uh, uh, DNS zones are IPv6 only, where you start having only IPv6 hosts in there. And then the next step, you say, like, also my name servers are IPv6 only. This is like a really progressive way how to easily grow stuff. Also, there's something again, like coming back to um, to actually here. There's no reason that you, like, I really say there's no reason that you can claim my employees they are distributed in the world. They don't have IPv6 in that region or in that region uh, because tunnels really, really work easy and great today. And they work like on any operating system, including your Android phone, including iOS. So there's no good excuse anymore nowadays to say like, I, I, I don't have IPv6 there. And again, like if you don't agree with me, uh, let's discuss afterwards. But I'm really claiming there's no, no, um, uh, no, solo, no, no situation anymore where you really can't have IPv6. So um, that said, there was a bit about motivation and saying like what you can do and it's very simple examples that I wanted to give you this morning. Um, the major point is not only you help like developing the internet and you make uh, like you adapt to modern technologies, the main point is really IPv6 only services make your life much, much easier. You don't have to think anymore about like, uh, I have a firewall for IPv4, I have a firewall for IPv6. No, 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 no. Just do IPv6 only or IPv6 first and then think, well, maybe, I, maybe I don't need legacy IP anymore. If you do, there are like at least, uh, I mean, there are many, many different ways. You can still say, all right, I have public content that is IPv6 only. And uh, fun fact, most of our websites are actually IPv6 only. And they're bridged by a proxy in the end, like for like the stuff that we want to be seen by everybody is bridged by a proxy that is IPv4 and IPv6. But it's only one machine. So the rest is like purely <coughs> IPv6 only. So it's really, really easy and nice to see. And it, obviously, if you want users to be able to access uh, the legacy internet, well, you can uh, set up NAT64 combined with DNS64. It's always an option. 
So you can actually even, like internally, you don't need any IPv4 anymore. The other thing um, is a bit about like why do you do this? And this is something, um, some background there. In 2002, some people uh, in Germany uh, wanted to build a so-called Chaos VPN. Uh, some of you might have heard about this. This was like a very early fully meshed IPv6 VPN. And the problem there was like in 2002, uh, the VPN perfectly worked. Uh, it was, it's again, fully meshed. But there was no content there. And from what I see, like from the history, we cannot go out there and just say, like, IPv6 is great. It's like, what kind of purpose serves this? And the purpose is very different, like, on who you talk to. Like, as I said, like, uh, for me personally, it's, it's a lot about being able to work more efficient, to have like an easier network, to have things that are more clear. But if you talk like, for instance, to developers, and developers, uh, if you like follow some forums, are like IPv6, uh, what is it, scratching my head, and like, uh, I will just turn it off. This doesn't really work, and obviously the thing that we communicate to developers is like, if you turn IPv6 off today, or if you don't support it, then your app might not be reachable tomorrow anymore or might already not be reachable today anymore. Or in systems where you actually expose your service on IPv6 only hosts that are bridged to an IPv4 network later, if the application doesn't bind like to IPv6 TCP, then it will not work. So as a developer, you really have to take care of this today. Content producers are same motivation, like uh, if you put your content on IPv4 only networks, it might not be reachable anymore from some parts of the internet. Um, same for like if you go higher management and you say like okay uh, why do we do IPv6 it's like to save money it's like what I want to say with this is like IPv6 is not just great because it's great but IPv6 is great because it has a reason there and in terms of like you know your parents you can say like uh, you, st you still need to fix the computer I don't know who has not experienced this situation here um, so yeah, and if, if anybody's asking like, why do you need IPv6 for anybody who doesn't understand the stuff, like 64 bit was yesterday, 128 bit is today. Uh, yeah, obviously it works, that's all right. Um, in terms of, yeah, the, the three things that I see as a takeaway is really, today you cannot say anymore, I cannot put up uh, IPv6 only connection because there's no content, there is content, and vice versa with uh, the connectivity, you can have IPv6 connectivity. The other thing is like really anybody here uh, who is doing, like if you only take any of the steps that I presented here, you're actually helping to grow IPv6 because of your consciousness, thinking of like, uh, this is how I actually build uh, my networks. And in the end, it makes life much, much easier. There's one thing, um, I said like it's a bit political speech here and you don't have to agree with me. If you look at it a bit like what happens worldwide nowadays, I'm not pointing into any direction, um, not westwards, not anywhere. Um, if you don't fight for your right for democracy, democracies tend to deteriorate. So if, and we are here in a country that has a very uh, lived democracy, so if people stop going to vote, well, then things will deteriorate. There will be less people who are in charge for uh, what happens in the country. So IPv6 is very similar in this regard. If you don't participate, uh, you know, you will not be part of the bigger thing. So this is really a call. If you didn't think about it uh, today, before today, uh, participate in it. Because otherwise, you will get lost uh, from the train. Right, that's it uh, from my side. Um, if you are more curious about uh, this IPv6 stuff and you want to have like some easy accessible information, uh, we started a chat uh, named ipv6.chat where you're invited to come and ask like, how do I start uh, with IPv6? What are the first steps? How do I get IP addresses in my home? And all those things, it's like from uh, expert to beginner, everything there. Uh, we're also having uh, IPv6 hacking at Hack for Claros in end of May. Uh, at the very end of the world. 
um, which is actually not true. We have, we have two actually ends of the world in Glarus. Uh, but both of them pretty. Right, um, that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, after this talk, like everybody's completely convinced. And again, if not, um, I'd like to discuss with you later uh, in the break. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Nico. Um, any questions? Oh. Hi, good morning. I'm uh, Max, the, uh, I'm the APV6 program manager at the Ripen CC. So thank you for this talk because it gives a positive message. Uh, the problem I have is uh, I hit the reality every single day uh, because of... Uh, and uh, I'm one of those who actually tried to run uh, an IPv6-only network. I've recently also been to a, um, an event that was saying, yeah, we have IPv6, we run that, we have an IPv6-only network. And that was a miserable experience because they didn't set up any translation. So the problem was, uh, and what, what you have to uh, try not to do, is to give a wrong message about IPv6. So setting it up uh, quickly and doing it uh, badly might give the wrong message. And people, as you were saying, like people going back and saying, this, this just, just doesn't work. Uh, so pay attention to that. Uh, that is my other message. And... The reality also is that uh, there are many people who just don't, don't think with the IPv6 mindset. And again, we see it every day. We see it as, if you look at the statistics from the Ripen CC about the IPv4 transfer market, where people actually spend a large amount of money to buy IPv4 because, just from someone else, because they don't want to spend that same amount of money to deploy IPv6, which would actually be more future proof. And we've been trying for years, even uh, Natalie, she was the IPv6 program manager before me, we tried to come up with a messaging that is similar to what you say. It's like if you look at IPv6, it's more future proof. But that, that has proven, unfortunately, not to work that much. So, uh, yeah. Th uh, thanks a lot for the comment there and also yeah. for the update. It's true, not everything is like, if you go production, you obviously, and it's, it's a good change, like, uh, take care that the people actually have a good experience because otherwise it will be the, the IPv6 stuff doesn't work. Um, the major thing that I can say to your third comment uh, about the money spent for IPv4, uh, this is actually quite interesting. I, I know I'm not totally in line with the uh, right policy of saying like we don't rent or sell IPv4, but that's a different topic for later. <laughs> um, the major point is like today, if you build up something and you're a, like, we are basically in a way like a, we are like a three year old startup or two year, I, I don't know, something like that. The point is like when you start today, you cannot afford IPv4. There's a simple dot there and it doesn't make any sense. And the comparison that I usually make is like today when you, uh, yeah, I know it's Switzerland and everybody's taking public transport, but if you happen to buy a car, and if you go today and you go out and you want to buy a VW, you buy a diesel, this is for me the same thing as going out and buying IPv4 space. It is something that you can do, but it's not something that is really sustainable. It's not really like the way everybody's going to. So the main reason like, it's also like, let me just, sorry, it's a bit longer answer, but this point is for me quite uh, important. If you're going and if you spend money to get more IPv4 stuff, you're basically saying, well, I'm building something that is like an island solution. I will be excluded midterm. And I'm also not supporting like the internet as such because new companies will be doing IPv6 and you will have problems with them. And the bigger you are as an organization, if you don't adapt IPv6 today, you will have more problems tomorrow. So while we can do this, uh, Smaller companies have to go IPv6 already today. If I can add a small comment, it's uh, in our little like groups about uh, discussing about how we can make this happen with IPv6. We're always thinking, and this is a point where I can say you can make a difference. 
was uh, imagine we, we were looking at measurements and thinking, oh, this uh, ISP started going up, 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 and up, uh, implementing IPv6, and then it stopped. What happened there? And then most of the time, when we think about what happened when IPv6 stagnates in an organization or whatever, it's, oh, that person left and went to this other organization. <laughs> and, then, and then you think, oh, yeah, that was, it was that single person who made a difference there. And when that person left, uh, things stopped. So this is a point where everyone can make a little bit of a difference. So uh, this is also part of the nice message, I guess. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're in a bit on a tight schedule. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, go to Nico, meet him, talk with him. That's uh, really at least half part of uh, what is Finok about. So, thank you very much, Nico.